Hello, 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 everybody. Welcome to the Creators Lounge Podcast Season 2. I, of course, am your host, Ben Jay. I'm so excited to start the new uh, season up. The guest is today is someone I've known for a while. He's got some incredible music. I can't wait to get in this conversation. All right, my man, let these people know. What is your name? Where are you from? What do you do? Hi, my name is Caronix, and I make music. Most of the time I make uh, hard dance music. So, yeah. That's that. That's that. Awesome. To, to start the question off, like the first thing I want to kind of want to ask, it's a funny question. Why music? Like, why did you get into music in the first place? What drew you to music? <clears throat> it was like 10 years ago when I was like, thinking about what I'm gonna do uh, when I grow up and I was like oh, well, I want to be an an engineer but then I was like talking with my friend and asked him what he's gonna do when he's gonna grow up and <laughs> and I was like I told him that I want to be an engineer and I was like thinking about it deeply but then I was like Nah, fuck it. Uh, I, let's think about it a bit, a bit longer. And then I was like, "Hey, dude, what about if we become uh, music producers?" And he was like, "Yeah, that's a good idea. We always send um, music to each other, like through Bluetooth." And then that's how it started, and we went to the. To his house to check uh, some uh, DAW. So, dude, that's crazy. What what shocks me about that is that you were pretty young. I'm assuming like you were probably like around 10, 13 years old, and you were already thinking pretty seriously, you know, about like what you wanted to do. And then you went into music. Have you ever looked back after choosing mu- music? Like, have you ever thought about giving up or like going back to engineering? Um, I thought about giving up because it gave me depression and like, like negative stuff. But then I took some like months, couple or few months uh, break. Then I came back and started it seriously. Yep, I feel you, man. It's 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 so funny because like every musician is like you know like we love music, but we also have to deal with the stuff like the depression, you know, the writer's block, the anxiety, and it's like what we love is kind of you know hurting us, but it's also what we love, so it's like a lose <laughs> lose lose situation, I guess. <laughs> but um, how how do you deal with those those situations where you do get a little bit low, you know, you do get depressed, you do feel stressed about stuff? Like what keeps you going? How do you handle it? I'm just like, fuck it. There's like depression, everything, and it happens to everyone. And like, uh, it's a life thing. It always happens to someone. And then, like, how should I explain it? <laughs> no, I, I, like, I, I kind of get what you're getting at. Like, everyone deals with it. And so it's just something you have yeah, to work it, through. It, it, yeah, you have to walk through it. Yeah, yeah. So. That's, yeah. that's super true, man. I mean, regardless of if you're doing music, if you're doing engineering, if you're doing, you know, architecture, like, you're going to have to deal with this stuff, like, these mental problems and these challenges in life. The The real question is how do you, you know, make it through? You know, do you stick with it or do you give up? So I, I do respect you to, to stay in the game like that, even though it is, you know, there's difficulties and struggles. What would you say is the hardest part about being a music producer? Getting new ideas and, like, learning learning new stuff or like trying to learn new stuff or try trying to find new stuff basically absolutely absolutely and i do want to touch that more later on but what we're still talking kind of about you as a music producer i was curious because you've been doing music production you know for like you know eight ten years or more ten Uh, years ten years now right okay so a whole decade from my own personal experience when i first got into music like I didn't really know what I was doing, right? So I was just like making very simple tracks with like 
pianos and some drums but then like now that i've been doing music for like close to seven or eight years like i know what i'm doing when i get into a daw like you know i know how to make a song and i kind of have like this confidence about making music now i was curious about yourself like do you have like a confidence when you're making music yeah i actually do feel like it how long do you think it took you to get that confidence about like five years four years like i felt like i can do this when i was like 15 years old so yeah that's how i felt like confident right exactly and for me it was like the same as you like around four or five years when i kind of finally i was starting to feel like confident about it i wasn't so like you know uneasy or nervous you know self-doubting myself um talk to us about getting into the studio so whenever you go into the studio to make a song like what is your mindset whenever you do sit down to start making a track i'm just thinking about like first a thing about that how I should start like for example there's lots of or like many ways to start like melodies chords and so on but then i like thinking about the theme first and then then i will add the all kind of sounds to it so i can like combine it but then i also do like to uh make lots of chord chord progressions and melodies so that i can like uh pick one of them and then add add them to the song right 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 so you said when you get into the studio you first think about the theme when you said that theme would be like you know dark i guess or energetic or cute something like this right yeah that kind of gotcha and then kind of build from there that's super cool and also like for example, if I want to create space theme okay. or like sure. Star Wars or any kind of like, love it, yeah, yeah, yeah. Stuff. I love that. So you kind of go in, kind of a, I'm kind of a vague, kind of open uh, concept, and then you can kind of flesh it out from there to make it more exactly what you want um, to make it. Um, tell me about that inspiration. Where does that inspiration come from, as far as doing a space concept or doing like an energetic concept? Does it kind of draw from like the TV you're watching or the people you're talking to? Like, where does it come from usually? Um, sometimes it comes from the other producers, like actually like Pfizer's stuff. He makes really good <laughs> uh, space team music. And one of the most interesting concepts you've done before was a uh, pirate concept. You had one of your songs that was kind of like a pirate theme. <laughs> where where did that come from like how did you come up with a pirate concept i think it was like as a joke or some something oh yeah now i remember it was the melody that i made and then i sent him to it and i was like hey let's make a pirate song <laughs> <laughs> like, i love the melody it sounded like a pirate kind of i love it uh, so. <laughs> yeah, and, and talking about that, a lot of music does start from jokes or, or you know, inside jokes from between producers. How do you feel yeah. about the new rise in, like, meme music? Like, there's a lot of, like, meme music going around these days. What do you think about that? Um, actually, they're funny. Uh, sometimes I listen to them, but, but like, rarely. <laughs> It's pretty it's pretty funny to me because it's 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 cool that memes can go from, you know, just being like, you know, images on a paper to now we're even translating into music, you know, and audio and stuff like that. Do you think that that meme music is like a viable market? Like it would actually be something serious in the future or is it more of just like a passing phase? Uh, it can be anything. Like you can sell some meme music, you can like you know, give it for free and so on <laughs> it's like you know just regular music depends on how you market it i guess i think that i guess youtubers have been doing meme music for a long time if you look like joji and stuff he was doing back with a pink suit guy you know <laughs> <laughs> so yeah yeah meme music it, it does have a foothold definitely <laughs> Welcome aboard!
Jenny B1 wife. Yeah. A lot of producers, because we're talking about themes, concepts for music, um, a lot of producers, I feel like, struggle with turning their concepts or their themes into an actual sound, into an actual song. Uh, do you struggle with this at all? Yeah, sometimes. I do. Well, I'm curious about like, you know, what's your process for kind of translating an uh, idea into an actual song. You know, I guess it would have to do with sound design, stuff like that. Uh, for sound deciding, I'm just I just do some random sounds that I like, and then go for there. Okay, I gotcha. And then talk to us about the creative process, then, bro. So whenever you're in the studio working on this song and making music, are you the kind of person who like procrastinates a lot, takes a lot of breaks, or do you tend to be really locked in? You know, work on the song 24 hours. Like, what side are you on? Well, I'm actually both. Mo most of the times I like to be locked in to the, or like focused on the song or like on the project, I mean. And then sometimes I need to take a break because to reset my uh, ears. Everyone so, has yeah. to take a break. I mean, that's just part of the game, right? Um, yes. how, do you, how do you stay locked in though? For some people, it is a struggle to stay locked into stuff. For you, is it natural, or is there certain stuff you do to stay locked in, like turning off your phone or not checking notifications or something? Sometimes I just, well, work on, on project and then send some, like, the audio file to someone to ask for the feedback, what they think about it. But then I never touch my phone. Except, except on break times. Phones can definitely be a huge uh, uh, issue, you know, for focusing on stuff. So I, that's something I was curious about. You mentioned getting feedback from other producers. Uh, does it make you nervous to share your music, like publicly, or even just with another producer? Is that something that's kind of like a, a, a source of anxiety for you, or does it not really bother you, sharing your sounds? Uh, it doesn't bother me at all. So, yeah. Mm, I kind of like to know what they think about them, about my songs. Even yeah. if it's negative? 
<laughs> yes. Well, it's a feedback. Yeah, exactly. Or if if they if they if it's feedback. Yeah. Yeah. If it, if they just say it's shit bad and so on. Yeah. And how do you deal with that? Like, how do you if they do say it's it's no good? Like, how do you take that negative uh, criticism? Like, do you work it into the song and change it, or do you kind of say like they don't know what they're talking about? Uh, I just feel like kind of sad when they talk about it. I'm I'm just like why they don't just listen to other stuff, not my my stuff. Like, yeah, so, yeah. Ex ex absolutely, and everyone has to deal with that, right? Like, even the most successful people, like Marshmallow, has to deal with a lot of hate from people. You know, uh, Skrillex had to, I think, back in the day. I think that a lot of artists have the mindset that every new song needs to be better than the last song. So, what are your tips? for how to uh, improve your music, to learn new music techniques? Like, what's your process for picking up new skills? Mm, I would say network with other people, or like most, mostly with producers, because you will learn much more uh, better, I guess, or like not well, more uh, than l watching some tutorials because you will get some feedback. You will uh, be friend with someone and you will talk normal stuff and uh, all, that, all that kind of stuff. Like you will teach uh, your friend and he will like teach you. Yeah, dude, it's like a connection you. with people, you know, so it's a lot yeah. more valuable. Exactly. Well, and I think the other thing about uh, networking with people is that the feedback is also very relevant. You know, it's not like some video saying, this is true about everything. It's something that's, like, true for your song. And it's also personalized. So people can give, like, you know, a personal uh, interpretation of the sound you're going for, which is a great reason for networking. What tools do you use to network with, with other creators? How do you network with other creators? A uh, few years ago, I used to... I used uh, Skype, but now I just use Discord, which is really good. Discord is so huge. Why has Discord become so popular? Well, maybe because it's better than Skype. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, probably so. <laughs> yeah. But no, but Discord, it's funny because even though Discord's like an underground thing, underground is huge. Like every music producer uses Discord. So it's it it'll be interesting to see what happens like over the years as it becomes more mainstream, you know. Because right now I feel like it is still very much underground. Who who are some of your favorite uh, music producers that you have networked with? Some of your close friends and stuff in the music sphere. I guess I have to go with Archery because he's a great friend, and I like to talk with him a lot, <laughs> and. Yeah, we share lots of stuff yep. together. That's great, man. You're also friends with um, with the curator of Moe Music, the YouTube channel. How did you guys meet? <laughs> um, oh, yeah. Uh, it was one, like, was it three, four years? I think over three years ago when he asked, asked me on, I think it was on Facebook that uh can you help me to live stream stuff because i heard that you uh help with Olvagera as now as a gera a promotion it's an another uh music promotion channel, channel. okay i see mm -hmm. yeah and i was i said yeah i can help you and, that's so cool uh, and then i guess you guys just stay got... in touch yeah from there on yeah that's so yeah, cool. That's yeah. awesome. So, what is what? How do you feel about like music promotion channels on YouTube? Because I know that in the past they were really huge. These days they're facing some difficulties with like the monetization and everything. What's uh? What's your take on the whole music promotion uh, issue? Yeah, I have to agree that it's pretty annoying that they are getting demonetized. But then there's a lot of them uh music promotion channels and 
it's kind of bugging me as well because because why people why because why people want to create more music channels when there's like big ones and you will uh, like face the problems with YouTube so yeah but if you think that you can um, keep it going uh, then good for you <laughs> yep yep no no and and i think that's because of like the rise of the internet right like because we have social media and stuff like anybody can yep. do this stuff anybody can make a music promotion channel anybody can share their you know their pictures etc it's the same way even for music producers i feel like um with the rise in soundcloud you know and spotify like we do see so many more music pro producers than we did you know like five ten years ago how do you feel about the influx of like all of these music producers, all these this new uh, these new sounds that are happening? Does it excite you, or does it kind of uh, kind of bother you? There's so many. I think it's fine to have lots of upcoming or like new producers, but then there will be a lot of uh, copycats as well. I think, <laughs> but. But then, I mean, it's fine to have lots of millions of producers. <laughs> yeah, to be able to express themselves, you know, say what they want to say, you know, have a chance, you know, at, at doing what they want to do anyway. Which ones, which ones do you see that you have hope for? What's, where's the talent that you see? Like, what are the producers, the new up-and-coming producers that you, like, feel good about? Maybe some unique sounds and like new stuff as well like and also like new genres sure maybe let's talk about that for a minute new genres i have um i have a friend who is kind of complaining because uh he feels like there's too many subgenres in edm and so he was kind of annoyed that there's always a new sound, and always a new subgenre, and there's always arguments over what's better, you know, and what came first. Uh, talk to us about like the about the subgenre culture in EDM. Like, what are your what are your thoughts on that? <laughs> uh, I think it's normal to have subgenres. Can it go too far? I guess is a good question. Because, like, whenever we saw dubstep really blow up big, like, in 2011, 2013, we went from having dubstep to, you know, wonk step to, you know, like, crazy step, you know, Tokyo step, you know. Do you see any bad sides to that, or is it all good? I think it's all good, because it's, like, uh, a category for everything. Like, you, you need to sort some stuff, and... Uh, some people have like um, uh, taste on, for example, future house, which is like mm, house and future pace. I think future house is that the big <laughs> genre that's coming up big. Like a lot of people are talking about it lately. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, like you said, man. I mean, like genres are categories, right? So it's it's really just a way to classify your music. I don't think that that genres should like you know stereotype a sound or lock you in which is probably why we have so many subgenres because people don't want to be just dubstep you know they want to be like future tokyo step you know or something r really more like unique and specific and not normal you know which could be you know one reason we have so many subgenres
uh, talking about the whole flooded marketplace and how there's you know millions of music producers, what do you feel are the keys to success for up and coming music producers? There are more stuff. <laughs> no. Well, that's actually a good idea to learn more stuff than just uh, like rushing things on. Like, for example, you want to become professional and good at everything. You just need to uh, slow down and then just keep on learning new stuff and then you have the good quality uh, music, then you can like release them uh, to pu public. Do a lot of learning and have a lot of experience you can pull from to use on songs or putting out material. How interesting. Uh, a lot of people these days, uh, you know, they use stuff like YouTube tutorials, you know, or they use stuff like tutorials on Splice or whatever. How do you feel about, about that kind of culture? Learning stuff online through tutorial videos and stuff like that? Most of the tutorial videos are like pretty boring or like uh, time com consuming. Sure, like, absolutely. It's it, like an hour or two hours sometimes, yeah. Yeah. And some are, most of them, most of them are like uh, badly made as well. So uh, I think it's better to, like, like I said, networking is the best way to learn stuff, and it's like, uh, like easiest way to learn as well. Yeah, which has been a big thing. I mean, there, there's a lot of uh, young music producers, you know, age 13 to 16, who they just like network like crazy. Like they'll just jump in like an Instagram group chat, you know, or a Discord server and make like 50 new friends in one day. <laughs> you know, uh, I've seen that happen. I'm not sure if you've seen it happen before. Um, do you have any tips for networking with people and meeting people? How to like handle it? Especially because a lot of people I feel like on the internet are like introverts, you know, or scared to approach people. Um, you know, what are some tips for you on how to approach musicians, how to approach mus uh, music producers, and how to make a connection with them? Maybe share some like same interests and like you need, you don't need to like rush and then like you don't need to rush on things and then you can like talk about some other stuff as well like get interested to it gotcha and so build like a personal connection rather than just like one based on music yeah yeah connect with the person yeah. on, a, on a personal level i i agree with that that's just definitely been something that's worked for me because then you have like a human connection and then you can go into music or music videos you know or whatever you're working on with the other person absolutely man um also i found it interesting because you talked about learning a whole lot of stuff before you put out music how often do you finish the songs that you work on obviously a lot of us producers have like hundreds of works in progress you know how how often do you actually finish the songs that you start maybe a few like yeah, a few, like three, four <laughs> projects. Same. <laughs> you know, obviously. Just like, yeah. I just have like monkey brains. I can like <laughs> have any good ideas. <laughs> right? You end up making like a hundred <laughs> projects and you finish like one of them. <laughs> and, like sometimes I'm just, I just like open the project and then I'm like. Why? Why did I even open this project? <laughs> open this project. And, then just and then I just listen to it, and yeah. I was like, "Okay, that shit. That, that's it. <laughs> Delete the project close file. <laughs> just close it. <laughs> Basically, right? <laughs> but when you do finish the song, when you actually do put the walk into it, see it through, get it completed, how do you decide to release it or not release it? Uh, I just think about it like, um. If it's ready, like if it's actually ready, like mixing, mastering, and everything, like if it's done. So it's really a quality thing for you. It has to be like the right kind of quality. 
and how to like make it like sound good for, to my ears. So yeah. Talk to us about what your standard of quality is, Kero, because I mean, obviously, a huge debate in the music community is quality versus quantity, right? And so there's artists who do put out a whole bunch of music, and other artists who only put out a little bit of music, but the quality is arguably better. Where do you stand on that kind of conversation? I don't know, man. <laughs> it's a it's a big question. Like it's it's a big debate, man. I don't I don't know that there's a right or a wrong answer. <laughs> To pull it back more personal than just for you, Caro, like, what is your standard of quality? How can you, like, how do you decide if something is, like, good quality or not good quality, in your opinion? Talking about your own songs. Mm, I always think about that my uh, own song sounds shit, but then... <laughs> um, but then I'm just, just trying to make it sound good. Gotcha. Gotcha. If you always think your songs sound bad, though, like, do you ever get confidence after you put it out and somebody's like, this sounds great or I love this song? Does that give you, like, a confidence booster? Yes, it does. Mm -hmm. Would you, do you think that that's a motivator for you to put out music? Like, positive comments or good feedback? Yeah, it does give me some boost. Awesome. Yeah. Cool. It's important, I'll right? New music in. Yeah. yeah. It's important because, I mean, that's, like, all about fan culture, right? Like, the fans giving love, you know, the fans, you know, saying this impacted them. It's definitely huge for any kind of creator. Art, music, you know, painting, whatever. All right, Kara, before we wrap up, I did want to ask, what projects are you working on right now, and what is in the future for Karonix? Um, One thing I can't say, but... Okay, two things top I secret. Like. Yeah. <laughs> You're yeah. launching your own social media app. <laughs> uh, one project that I'm working on is um, collab with Bara. Ooh. He's a J Japanese uh, friend. And I'm excited about that. One, I'm excited. Another one is solo track. Solo track. All right. Awesome. How soon before we get those released, my, my man? One month, three months, one year? <laughs> I know there's gaps. There's gaps between your releases, bro. Like, you'll put out a song in January, the next one's in, like, December. So I'm just curious, like, how soon can we expect it? <laughs> to 2025. All right, all right. <laughs> put the timer on. I'm waiting. I'm waiting. <laughs> just kidding. No. Maybe this year, like, maybe I'll release four tracks. Ooh, that'd be awesome. So maybe a Caronix EP then before the end of the year. <laughs> Good luck, yeah. man. Good luck. Keep working on the tracks. I cannot wait to hear them. I, I really do love your music. <laughs> All right. So for the end of every episode, we always do a speed round. I'll ask a quick question, quick response, and we'll just go through it. Are you ready? Yeah. Okay. All right. What TV show or anime are you watching right now? Game of Thrones. <laughs> no, I don't want to okay. watch Game of Thrones. Um, God damn it, I, I don't remember. Uh, something Charlotte and Ch Tuesday. Okay, so alright. What's so your much. favorite song at the moment? Uh, Bloodlust. Bloodlust and... Uh, Bloodlust. God damn it. <laughs> I don't know the song name. <laughs> you listen to but it. You just don't I, I pay remember the, yeah, the, the title. Producer name. Gotcha. <laughs> All right. What's your favorite color? Blue. What's your favorite food? Spaghetti and bologna. Bolo bologna. <laughs> <laughs> what's your favorite? What's your favorite rest activity? Uh, chilling. What's your life motto? <laughs> um. <laughs> it could it could even just be like a quote that inspires you. Um. Talk less, eat uh, eat more. I like it. Like. Yeah, I get it. Dude, stay on the grind, keep learning. Yeah. What languages do yeah. you speak? Uh, Finnish, Swedish, English, and Russian. Oof. What countries do you want to visit? Mm, 
Japan and England. 2020, you gotta do it. <laughs> <laughs> and last question, something you want to do that you have never done before. I don't know. <laughs> Nothing, come, uh, Nothing comes to mind. mind. Alright. Dude, yeah. Kironix, I want to thank you so much, man, for coming on the show today, for starting season two of the Creators Lounge. Um, I've known you for a little while. I love every single release you put out. They're always so full of energy, and they have like a very unique uh, flavor to them. So I do wish you the best of luck on your future activities. Is there any last words you want to say to the audience? Any thoughts on your mind? Just keep what you are doing, and don't stop, because there will be some uh some problems and then just keep pushing it and so long that it will the problem will go away fantastic love it i love it guys i really encourage you to check out karonix's music i'll give you guys some links to his stuff I'll obviously give some uh previews of his music it is super energetic it is super creative it is super cool and the quality is off the charts this dude like he learns so much he applies everything he learns and you guys can hear it when you listen to his music i want to thank everyone for watching and thank you for joining us on season two i will see you next time goodbye